Hi, uh, today I would like to explain about the amphotericin B molecule. I will concentrate more on the medicinal chemistry part and less on the pharmacology. So amphotericin B is a structure uh, looking like this and this is an antifungal antibiotic used in treatment of many fungal infections like candidiasis, aspergillosis, cryptococcidiosis and many other fungal infections. It is one of amphotericin B is also listed as one of the essential medicines categorized by the World Health Organization. It is generally given through the intravenous route to treat the patients. Amphotericin B is a if you talk about the medicinal chemistry point of view, it is a polyene antibiotic. Polyene is nothing but it has many double bonds. If you can see in this picture, there are so many double bonds and uh, it is called as a polyene antibiotic and this polyene antibiotic it binds to the ergosterol of the fungal plasma membrane the fungal plasma membrane is uh, is made up of uh, sterol called ergosterol ergosterol is very similar to the cholesterol as I explain about it in the next slide so it binds to the ergosterol and then makes water pores. When it makes the water pores, the ions present inside the cell like the sodium, potassium and any other cells, any ions, they get out of the cell and finally the cell dies. In that way, the amphotericin B acts as a fungicide. So this is the amphotericin B structure. So this is the structure of uh, cholesterol and ergosterol. There is a very good, very high similarity between these two structures. They are these both are sterol molecules and I will just want to say that this 3 hydroxy position uh, just please remember I will explain about this uh, the importance of this 3 hydroxy position 3 beta hydroxy position in later on. So this structure very similar is very similar to these these two are very similar except at some at only one position in which this 24th position the CH3 group is added in the ergosterol but not in cholesterol. So the structure is very similar and that is why when the amphotericin B molecule is uh, side effect is seen uh, it can also bind to the cholesterol uh, sometimes uh, and side effects can be seen in the patient. The synthesis of the amphotericin B occurs through polyketide synthesis. Uh, in this picture, I have, I have shown you the synthesis of uh, doxorubicin molecule. The doxorubicin, erythromycin, amphotericin B, all these uh, structures have a very common synthesis pattern with the help of uh, ketosynthase, acyl carrier proteins, acyl synthases. Uh, these SL transferases. These all enzymes are required to produce the structure. So in this example, I'll just give a brief idea on how this doxorubicin molecule has been synthesized. Here, firstly, uh, the ketosynthase group and the acyl uh, carrier protein, these two are linked each other with a spacer region. And these two groups have a sulfhydro group moiety attached. Firstly, the acetyl coenzyme A, this is acetyl coenzyme A binds to the ketosynthase group. And once it is bind to bound to the ketosynthase group, the coenzyme A is released. And this one is attached like this. And the SL carrier protein, it is bound with the melanin coenzyme A in the same pattern like this, and the coenzyme A is released here. So in the next step, if you can see, the structure would be like this. There is no, uh, there, there is a acetyl coenzyme, acetyl group attached here and melanin group attached here. Now here what happens, here the coenzyme condensation takes place. The acetyl coenzyme A group, acetyl, acetyl group bound is reacted with the melanin coenzyme, melanin group, melanin group in the middle and 
releases the carbon dioxide. Actually, the, claim, the claims and condensation is actually happen between the two esters or one ester and one carbonyl group. And once it is bound to the other one, it is not bound to the end of the chain. It is actually reacting with the middle. That's why it's called as a claims and condensation mechanism. It's a, it's a different me mechanism. And once it is bound, the structure would be seen like this. There is a release of carbon dioxide evolution. So this is the structure finally we can see and this step repeats the same way like how acetyl coenzyme acetyl co A is bound to the ketosynthase group. The acetyl coenzyme acetyl co A is uh, the, this melanyl coenzyme A, melanyl group is attached again to the this one like how acetyl co A is attached and the cycle repeats this way. And finally, when we get this, uh, finally we get the structure like this. This this is uh, the cycle is repeating like nine times. So this structure would be like this. And finally, this gets cyclized with help of cyclase enzyme, and the structure would be seen this way. The same way the amphotericin B molecule is also synthesized using these uh, domains of this SL carrier protein, dehydrotase, SL transferase, ketosynthase, these all uh, domains are present at, at some of, in some places these are these enzymes play a role and some at some places these some of them are not played a role but still they help in the synthesis of the amphotericin B. In this way the structure the synthesis is gradually the chain is gradually increased and finally after the whole chain is increased like this, in the middle, some of the enzymes like um, uh, keto reductase is there. For example, this will help in the reduction of the keto group to the alcohol group, and the dehydrotase group is don't have domain is present, which helps in the formation of double bonds in the chain, and some other some other like. Uh, in oil reductase would be there to make single bonds. So finally, when the at the end we can see there is a long chain, and this one gets cyclized. Cyclization takes place, and the structure would be like this. And later on, the glycosylation takes place, methylation takes place, and finally the structure we can get is the amphotericin B, the final one like this. So this is how the amphotericin B synthesis has happened. And now I look at this, see how the interaction is taking place. I've already told you that uh, this amphotericin B is bound to the ergosterol. But the amphotericin B is not just bound to the ergosterol one by one. As per the reports uh, I've seen in this paper, in the biophysical chemistry paper, I, I found that very interestingly that this amphotericin B molecule is actually bound in a, to ergosterol in a 2 to 1 ratio. The 2 is to 1 stoichiometry. The amphotericin B molecule is attached to the another amphotericin B molecule through Van der Waals forces, and in between, the ergosterol is present like a sandwich. And these amphotericin B molecules, either binding to the ergosterol or amphotericin B, amphotericin B molecule attaching to its another amphotericin B molecule, this retraction is, also, is actually happened through Van der Waals interactions. These are non covalent interactions. And these two interactions, uh, the amphotericin B molecule with the amphotericin B molecule has more interactions than the amphotericin B with the ergosterol. That is because we can see in the structure that the surface area of the amphotericin B molecule is uh, higher than the ergosterol. So that's why it has more interaction between these two than these two. And the amphotericin B structure itself implies that uh, it is amphoteric in nature. It, it can act as an acid or it can act as a base. And it is hydrophilic to the inside and hydrophobic to the outside. So the more polar groups are present inside and the more hydrophobic ones outside. So this is how the interaction is taking place. And they have also seen in the paper using uh, bioinformatics tools and they found that uh, the 
interactions van der waals interactions these are the van der waals interactions and these are the electrostatic interactions if you see in this picture the amphotericin b ergosterol is uh, coming at this fringe and the amphotericin b with amphotericin b is having less energy when compared to the amphotericin b with ergosterol so the the lesser the energy the the higher the bond strength higher the interaction is taking place and here in this where in, in this picture of electrostatic interactions as well if you can see there is a increased interaction between the the amphotericin b molecules when compared to the amphotericin b with ergosterol now we will have a question here why there is as amphotericin b molecules are both the same and why their interactions are actually happening between and the ergosterol with different uh, energy levels so in this paper they were explained they were explaining that the interaction was actually happening through van der waals interactions and electrostatic interactions of course but the one which is which is with having uh, lesser energy they are interact they may be interacting they are interacting with the three hydroxy position here so i was telling you previously that this three beta hydroxy plays a role in hydrogen bonding so in that way the one with it has it as the structure only has only one hydroxy position at gosterol so only one amphotericin b can bound to the can be bound to this uh, uh, ergosterol with this on this b3 beta hydroxy position so in this way the energy is much lesser than the what you can see in the other one so this is how the interaction is taking place this is about the amphotericin b molecules interactions and its medicinal chemistry thank you for watching the video and please subscribe